Okay, so I'm going to try to make another video while I have the generator running and I have some good light. Um, this one is, it's actually going to be, it's, it's not going to be a, um, it's not going to cover the full topic. It's going to address some stuff to do with the cops that I've been dealing with recently. Um, I'm probably going to make another one that is a, an extended version that goes over, um, I may make a separate video for each encounter that I found distasteful. Um, but I'm going to go over a couple things, trends, that I noticed with them. Most of them, not necessarily all, but most. Um, and then the bulk of this video is going to be a message that, well, it would be something that I would say to their wives and or mothers if I ever had the opportunity to meet them. So. And like I said, uh, I will probably be making, I'll be making probably at least one or two separate videos that recount some of the specific encounters and get into a bit more detail and um, give my opinion and my analysis on how gross it, it was, the way the police officer behaved, um, and why he should be shamed, and um, you know, some people who know him should probably be ashamed too. I think I've already been either saying outright or um, implying that I've been getting bounced around my hometown island by cops ever since I had some run-ins with some elitists out in the dunes, elitist dog walkers that felt like they owned the island and didn't want to see human trash living out there while they were walking in their fantasies through the dunes. Um, one of them was that NBA player's dad. I'm going to be making a special video about that, too. It's coming. Um, soon, soon. Probably tomorrow. Um, yeah. I didn't have any trouble out there for a couple months out in the dunes. Uh, the NBA player's dad actually, like, started harassing me towards the beginning but other than him, um, I didn't have any trouble for a bit, except like I saw him, like the big encounter was uh, towards the beginning. And then we just sort of had like unpleasant see each other moments out in the dunes. I did notice when I was in the front part of the lot, he seemed to stick with his dogs towards closer to the front part of the lot. And when I was parked back by the water tower, the old water tower, he seemed to spend more time going back there around the water tower more with his dogs. And, oh, no, yeah, I'm going to save it for this, for that video. Sorry. See, I can't get sidetracked. All right. So some of the trends I noticed. I'm just going to go over some of the basic trends and again other videos will have some will be more detailed specific uh, one of the things uh, that a lot of the officers would say to me was um, you know don't or imply in so many words don't make your problems my problems and or uh, they would brag in so many words I, I I have a job I pay my bills I have a house I feed my kids Cause, you know, I'd be like, I have, I have no money, dude. I, have, I have no way to get gas or move this thing, and this is my only option if I want to be able to bike back and forth to work. If I can't park up here, I can't get to my job, which means I will have even less money. Right now, I'm barely making it work. Um, please, there are no other options for me right now. You're gonna make you're you're making it so it's impossible for me to survive. 
I've said I said like all these things to uh, uh, I think just about all of these cops, almost almost all the cops that will be mentioned. Um, can't you just turn the other way? Like look the other way. Who am I hurting out here? I'm not hurting anybody. In fact, I'm cleaning up after people. I was cleaning up other people's trash. I was trying to dissuade jackasses from destroying the dunes uh, by just building cool little statues and stuff and a bench out of the trash and crap I found out in the dunes. Um, so, uh, yeah, other than a couple of elitist jackasses who uh, were just being narcissistic pigs, I wasn't bothering anybody. I wasn't bothering them either. They were just bothered by my very presence. By the fact that I was drawing air into my lungs. Because that's what narcissistic pricks they were. Um, yeah, so they would brag, the cops would brag a lot about like how they can feed themselves and their families. And they're just trying to, oh, they're just trying to survive. That was a big excuse. They're just trying to survive. Well, I just got, I'm just trying to survive just like everyone else. I'm just trying, I got to pay my bills. Some of them would say, I gotta, and some of them would be like, I can pay my bills. I can feed my kids. You know what I like to say to that whenever somebody likes to base their own value on whether or not they can perform tasks like a trained monkey in exchange for peanuts and take care of their basic responsibilities? When they brag about it, too. I can I pay my bills. I have a job. I pay my bills. I have a house. Oh, yeah? So did Dennis Rader and Jimmy Savile. Those are just two of a lot of examples I could be giving. But I'll just give you the two. My, my two favorite. My just, you know, right off the top of my head, I give these two. For those of you who don't know, the cops should know who these two are. If you don't, why do you have a bad? I'm more of a fucking cop than I clocked like half of you to be. I know more, I think I have a better idea of human nature and criminal psychology than you seem to display to me at least. Anyway, for those of you who don't know, Jimmy Savile raped that we know of somewhere around 500 children and disabled people. He was a British celebrity. He rubbed elbows with Hollywood celebrities. He was friends with royalty. He had many jobs. He was one of the first uh, DJs, famous DJs. He made a lot of money. He paid a lot of bills for himself and I'm sure for other people. He helped found uh, and fund uh, a sort of a charity institution facility for disabled people. And then he used that facility to gain easier access to disabled people to victimize and rape. There were lots of rumors floating around for years and years uh, before Jimmy Savile died uh, that he was a disgusting creep. And in fact, some of his victims, disabled people, um, they reported him um, and their doctors didn't take them seriously because they were disabled and so he just continued raping people until he died and he wasn't found out until after he was dead and his victims never saw any justice I think I already kind of uh, I gave this example in a previous one of the first videos I made Everyone thought he was swell. He seemed to be on top of his shit. He was a disgusting pig rapist. And Dennis Rader, for those of you who don't know, was the BTK killer. BTK stood for Bind, Torture, Kill. Because that's what he liked to do to women. He did that for 30 years. And whilst he was doing that, he was... Um, he was a typical middle-class, white, American, suburban dad. 
He had a wife. He had two kids. He had a house, a mortgage, car. He was the president of his church. And he was a Boy Scout troop leader. He seemed like a swell guy, too. He paid plenty of bills. He worked. Both, both of those dudes were pieces of shit. Disgusting piggers. Certainly not human beings. I, I don't know what you would call them again. I, I, I wouldn't say they qualify. Animals, really. They're animals. So, um, that's what I think of whenever I hear a fucking moron brag to me about. He has a job. He pays his bills. He has a house. That means jack fucking shit to me, jackass. That says nothing about the quality of your character or whether or not you even qualify as a human being. That just says you're a good little trained monkey who can do tasks for peanuts and then trade those peanuts to other monkeys for favors. That's earning a paycheck and paying the bills. But not every little monkey can figure out what the requirements are for humanity or what the meaning of life is. I figured that out, by the way. Um, so, yeah, you keep puffing yourself up, telling yourself you're a big man and you're a mature adult and you're a quality human being because you know how to do monkey work. And because you just do some shit you're supposed to do, feed your kids, you made them. Fucking feed them. That's your responsibility, jackass. You wanted a cookie for that? See, they need rewards to do the right thing. No one should have to fucking reward you for taking care of your responsibilities towards your children. No one made you have children. You made those responsibilities. It's your fucking fault. You brought it on yourself. Deal with it. Don't make your problems my problems. Oh, and by the way, whilst you're doing that, taking care of your responsibilities, you're also supposed to maintain your humanity by maintaining your empathy and your conscience. And your bravery. Ugh, people be blowing up my phone. All right. Um, if you can't do that, if you can't juggle taking care of your responsibilities and maintaining your humanity, then you don't qualify as a mature adult human being. And that's just not, that's not just my opinion. That's the truth. That's fact. You need to go back to kindergarten, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, I mean, I don't even know. If you can't maintain your humanity, do you qualify as a human being? You're a homo sapien. Then you're just a homo sapien. You're a trained monkey. You're a very, very clever trained monkey, but not a human being. He's, he's starting to see the difference. Am I making it clear to you? And yet we're giving the very clever trained monkeys um, guns and badges. We're giving them bang bangs. Bang bang! Bang bang! Yeah. Mm hmm. So. That's the first little issue I wanted to cover. And um, yeah, they're, essentially they're being cowards. I made this clear to them. I said things like, you're trading your humanity for a paycheck. Uh, one, one copy of said, no, no, I'm not. Honey, you do understand that just because you say the words doesn't change reality, right? You understand that I could say all I want that I'm the queen of England and I'm not gonna get whisked off to Buckingham Palace and thrown a fucking tea party. You know that, right? The truth is the truth is the truth. It is what it is. You're selling your humanity for a paycheck. I'm gonna get into greater detail, more depth 
in the other video about exactly how you're doing that since maybe you don't you haven't been able to work out exactly how you're doing that and uh, at the time I didn't feel like I had the time to sit there and explain it to you like I'm your mommy but I guess I'm everyone's mommy anymore so okay but you'll have to wait till the next video um yeah so the rest of this is what I would say to um the wives and the mothers of um these cops based on their behavior if I ever got to see these ladies I'm not sure what they qualify um in person just you know my opinion and this is what I was this is my personal uh, journal and my autobiographical story journal um <clears throat> Yeah, so I would say, ladies, uh, the males that you raised and or married have recently, uh, in encounters with myself, sacrificed their integrity uh, and humanity for paycheck. They made me feel like I wasn't a human being. Ladies, do you know why they call women the gatekeepers of society? I explained this to one of my mother's friends recently over Facebook Messenger. The reason why they call women the gatekeepers of society, it's a common sense answer, um, is because if women drop the morals and ethics ball, an empathy ball, do you really think that the men are going to pick it up? not allowed to drop that ball and it's really our job in a lot of ways to make sure that those things are maintained in our society because those are the key to maintaining humanity we're supposed to be fighting for humanity not for our own individual survival that's what that means by the way when they say God was it God family job country or whatever God at the top there represents morals, ethics, empathy, conscience, humanity. And it's a tricky thing to maintain because it actually has requirements and qualifications and there's boundaries and you have to you have to maintain it. You have to be vigilant, you have to be on top of it or it'll slip away and our species will become nothing more than baser animals. Maybe even worse than that, far more dangerous. So, um, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If, say you're a general at war, but your enemy doesn't know that you're at war with them, you you don't want to come off as some uh, warmonger in the area. You like maintaining a good image. Um, and you don't want to waste resources. You don't want to lose men. So you decide to engage in psychological warfare. Insidious, underhanded, you know, sabotage, that sort of thing. Against your neighboring civilization doesn't really matter. Which group in that civilization would you attack first? Would you undermine and belittle and beguile first? Remember, you're engaging in psychological warfare. Not, no weapons being used or fired. You're trying to take that civilization apart from the inside, have it implode. So that's going to involve just uh, discombobulating certain groups or people or them as a whole who would you go for first the linchpin that you would pull 
really the, the one pressure point you need to hit is the women, specifically the, the mothers, the young women about to become mothers. Um, why? Because uh, men are what they are and do what they do in no small way because of the women. Men will make themselves what the women want so that they can get laid. Um, if a, to quote Dave Chappelle, if a, woman, if a man could fuck a woman in a cardboard box, he wouldn't buy a house. Men will be as low as we allow them to be. And then, of course, the women, um, the women raise the children, the future generations of that civilization. And we're the ones that are supposed to imbue the children with morals and ethics and societal standards and such. And um, if we don't do that properly, because let's say the women are confused about their priorities, what's important in life, what they're really meant to be doing, what their responsibilities are to their species, to their society, to their children, their family, um, their, themselves, their own humanity. If women don't understand these things, let's say because media, movies, TV, social media is messing with them, um, well, you just sit back and watch that civilization go down the shitter. Yeah, because the behavior of the males will degenerate because women will have sex with them for basically doing next to nothing and acting like assholes. Because the women don't understand their own value, they don't understand the importance of their role in society and as mothers and as um, voices and forces meant to curb the extreme behaviors and lack of empathy of our male counterparts. Um, Because they think that, I don't know, they're Wonder Woman and they have to like juggle everything all at once. I have to be a career mom. No, make up your mind. You could do one at a time. You could do both, but one at a time. Not at the same time. Um, things like that. And the kids don't get enough attention. They don't get enough development. Uh, and yeah, just watch the whole thing go down the shitter. Really, ladies, um... You're supposed to be keeping your, your men in line. And you're failing. I don't know if I can even feel comfortable calling you ladies. I don't know that you qualify even as women. Because how can you qualify as a woman if you don't know what the qualifications are? If you don't know what the responsibilities of a woman is. I don't know how you could really qualify. Maybe a little girl at best. More children raising children. More problems. They're just trying to keep food on your table. There's lots of other ways they can keep food on the table. Hey, a job just opened up down at the uh, beef jerky place on the Washington Street Mall. I had to quit because I couldn't get there because I couldn't park my RV anywhere in a reasonable biking distance. Hey, I didn't have to violate my humanity or anyone else's humanity to work there either. They actually pay a higher wage than is typically paid on the island and you get tons of free samples like they literally freaking insist that you try all of the jerkies you have to know what they taste like you just get to like stand there and feed people most of the day just, you just get to nourish people and get paid for it you don't have to violate any any kind of humanity or be a total prick or act like you're you don't give a shit or maybe you really don't give a shit and you're just letting it loose. 
why don't you guys go ahead and see if you can get a job shelling out beef jerky? I think maybe I should have the badge and the gun because I seem to understand humanity a bit better than you guys. And I seem to be actually braver than all of you. Um, I don't know if I mentioned a thing I mentioned. You know, I, I sold half my stuff and, like, gave the other half away and moved whatever else into, like, a trailer and moved out west for a while because I'm, I'm basically sacrificing my dream of being a mom and having a family and putting my life at risk to um, uh, research and expose a cult network of pedophiles that I stumbled upon just because that's my life is special like that yeah and I know a couple of them went to school with them mm. I know like three of them actually I went to school with three of them dang dang well then a bunch of them I don't know at all as far as I know um <clears throat> so I sacrificed my um my safe paycheck my safety, my security, stability, to do what was right. They could have looked the other way and let me just live out in the dunes long enough to save up, save up enough money to get myself into a better situation. I could have looked the other way when I realized that I was seeing a bunch of child abusers talking to each other with symbols online in YouTube videos. I could have looked the other way and pretended I didn't see what I was seeing, gotten on with my business and just, you know, went, gee, I hope that fixes itself. Instead, I was brave and you're cowards. I just, um, if I could ask the cops just one question, it would be, how does it feel knowing that my spirit dick is bigger than all of your actual dicks? Combined. <laughs> and I pushed a baby out of my cooch, too. Still I have bigger dick and balls than you guys. You <laughs> pathetic spineless pussies anyway just thought I'd leave you guys with that you know all my viewers um, that's what I think of my encounter with the cops I've uh, had to deal with recently uh, some of what I think again there's gonna be another video at least at least one or two others um, but yeah uh, I think that's most of what I would have said uh, to the to the females. I might like kind of just re-say a lot of this and lump it all in together. We'll see. In the next video, we'll see. I was gonna get into something, because uh, I like take notes on certain things, like top make, things I want to make sure that I say. I was gonna get into how I measure a man, which is maybe, I think I'm gonna do that, say that for the next video. I typically like to measure them against Scythian warriors, not Sith Lords. I'm not talking Star Wars jackasses. Okay? Scythians. They were an actual civilization way back in the day. And they were hardcore. And um, as far as I've seen, the Scythians uh, would have walked right over your men's dead bodies on the battlefield. And giggled. And been like, oh, look, the Emperor has his harem fighting for him now. So, um, till next time, I think I'll have a more in-depth, detailed video prepared on this topic. Uh, I'll probably be doing, like, putting out a couple other videos, um, on different topics before that. Oh, and my kitten's calling me. I'm coming, baby. Okay. Wrapping it up. Bye-bye.